Everybody first get your little uh, blue sheet. The Shield of Faith Church will start with that. And um, years ago, we have learned, I mean many years ago, we learned that uh, there's two types of confession. There's confession of our sins, which uh, 1 John 1, 9 tells us, if I will confess with, uh, you know, uh, your sin, then God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, okay? So there is a negative part, and most of the church just understands confessing their sins, but yet we can confess what we believe. So I want you to put on the board tonight, first scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, verse 13. We have to learn to confess who we are in Christ and confess what we believe. Not all the time confessing what we feel. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a time to say, I'm tired. But don't go around all day saying, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, because you're going to get tired. Because <laughs> you get what you believe, you get what you speak. See, there's power in, to in the tongue. Life and death, believe me, we can speak death to ourselves, to others, or we can speak life to ourselves and others. So we have to learn to talk all over again, think all over again. That's where our minds have to be renewed. So look at the scripture on the board. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Yet we have the same spirit of faith. Notice, spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit. How about that? As he had. Now, it's not a capital H. It's a small H. So that means he. Now, who, who, I wonder who that is. Well, we know. We look at the Amplified. It tells us in, it's in uh, Psalms. That's David, King David. So we have the same spirit of faith as David had, who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. All right, Paul is saying. So we have to say that we got the same spirit of faith that King David had, and we speak, notice, we speak what we believe. Notice, I have believed. Well, what do you believe? Well, I believe that God loves me. I believe that I am more than a conqueror, through Christ Jesus, my Lord. I was talking to uh, a woman back, we had a, a di dinner back there and some person that was a guest came and, and I looked at it and I try this out on people and I say, isn't it wonderful, wonderful that you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ? See, I'm checking her out. She says, I'm not, the, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. I said, well, are you a Christian? Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yeah. Have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yeah, but I'm an old sinner. How many of you know that she doesn't know the Word of God? She used to be a sinner, but what is she now? What is she now? A saint. What are you now? A saint. You used to be a sinner. I didn't say you can't sin. I'm not saying that. You can sin anytime you want to. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying that we're not sinners. We are a saint. And you read the word of the Lord and the word of God is addressed to saints. You know your word? Everybody know the word? It's addressed to saints. Christians. Well, just to clarify uh, that, uh, would you turn real quick to... Uh, uh, Hebrews 10.10, 10. Uh, you know, I, I got to put the word up there. Put the word up there. Hebrews 10.10. 10. All right. All right, look at, look at the board now. Everybody looking at the board. It's 10.10. 10.10. 10. 10, 10. <laughs> That's an oil, isn't it? 10, 10. <laughs> okay. And in accordance with this will of God. In accordance with the will of God, we have been made. Everybody say, I have been made. Now, don't call God a liar, but that's what people do when they say they're not holy. Mm, that's good. Now, look at that. We have been made holy, consecrated, and sanctified by our good works. No. no, through the offering. And who was the offering? Jesus. 
made once for all of the body of Jesus Christ the only one. So we have we were sinners, but now we have been made holy by Jesus Christ. Now you begin to think, hey, I'm holy. Let me tell you, who lives in you is Jesus, and Jesus is holy, and he has become our holiness. See, we start out in our Christian life trying to get better and do better, and we labor, and we do, but after a while we find out that he's our life. That he lives in us, and he lives through us. And we let him live through us. Now, now you need to get it. It is no more I that liveth, but what? It is Christ that liveth in me. How many knows Galatians 2.20? Put that up there. See, there's a, uh, there is a definite transformation that we are what he is. Are you out there? Oh, I don't have time to show you all the scripture. Look at it. I've been crucified with Christ. Who is I? That old man has been crucified with Christ. In him, I have shared his crucifixion. What was you crucified? Yeah, 2,000 years ago. See, there's things, there's things that we can know. The Bible says you can know. I know that my old man has been crucified. I don't think. I don't, maybe he's going to die. No, he's already dead. God did that for me. God put me in Christ. And when Christ was crucified, I was crucified with Christ. You accept that by faith. So we know. All right, look what it says. Shared his, it is no longer I who live. So people are still trying to live their lives. No, let him, Christ, live his life through us. I can hear that crack on the wall. <laughs> oh, you'll get it by revelation, and I tell you, your life will be totally different. It is no longer I who live. Oh, my goodness. When I first started out in the Christian life, I tried to just do every. I, I just, oh, I could get better. I could do better. I, could, I realized he may, it, it's his life. It can't get no better. His life can't get no better. When we let him live his life through us, Look what it says. But Christ the Messiah lives in me and the life I now live and the life I now live in this body. I live by faith in and by and a heave to and rely on and complete trust in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So there's a transition that takes place now. We are new creatures in Christ. God has made us holy. And now we come to a place in our lives as the revelation comes into us. Instead of all the striving, we let him live his life in us and his life through us. By faith, you accept that. Okay? So that's what we confess. Everybody say, it is the more I I. that liveth, but it is Christ who liveth. In me and through me. Now the Holy Spirit has the responsibility as you are not rejecting that, but you accept that by faith, he will make it alive to you. And uh, when Watchman Nee, bless his heart years ago, for 20 years, he tried to kill himself. Are y'all still trying to do that? (laughs) Let me know when you achieve it. We'll have the funeral. (laughs) Oh, when my child, when you come to that place to realize that he did it for us. He is our life. He is our righteousness. He is our holiness. He is our sanctification. So we let him live his life through us. Now, don't try to figure it out with your intellectual little brain. You'll burn a tube out. Just accept it by faith and say, Lord, show me that. This is hard for me to understand. And you ain't going to understand it until the Lord reveals it to you. And then you'll come out shouting. You'll come out, wow, this is great. Now, we have put together many years ago, 
the shield of faith. Everybody get that? And get the first part, uh, the shield, right at the, the blue part at the beginning. <clears throat> Here's what it says. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, that's what our responsibility is. So now when you read the word of God, you find out what God's part is and what our part is. You find out what God has done, then you find out what God wants us to do. Okay? Very simple, not complicated. So, who takes the shield of faith and quits all the fiery darts of the enemy? Whose responsibility is that? That's ours. Okay, now the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to do that. Now, the next scripture, what I want you to see, is found in Philemon 1.6. Would you put that on the board, uh, King James, on this one? That'll be up on the board, Philemon 1.6. King James. The Amplified is good too, but I, I, I like the King James on this particular verse. That the communication of thy faith, we have to communicate our faith, the communication of our faith, may become effectual. How? By the acknowledging, look at the board, acknowledging of every good thing which is in Christ Jesus. Now, you need to look at that. All right, who's, um, how is our faith going to be uh, affectional? How is it going to be? By what? Acknowledging of every good thing which is in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now open, your, open it up. And let's do that. Let's do that right now. Everybody open it up to the first page. That's number two. It'll be number two faith. Now we're going to, we're going to communicate our faith and we're going to acknowledge every good thing that is in us. Now notice this. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. So when you communicate and you say this out loud, you hear the word of God and what comes? Faith comes. Okay? So, now, if you go around all day long, well, I'm just an old sinner, just a worm in the cabbage patch. That's what you'll be. Your emotions will pick that up and you'll be squirming around like a worm in the cabbage patch. Okay? So what you got to do when your mind gets renewed, you start communicating your faith that you are what? You are now righteous in God. Okay, now let's statuate that with the word, more of the Word of God. Turn to 2 Corinthians, put it up on, you don't have to turn there, but put it up on the board, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Everything I teach comes out of the Word of God. You can backtrack it all through the Word of God. Notice, <clears throat> are you ready? For he has made him to be sin, and who's him? That's Jesus. Look at the, look at the board up there now. For he has made Jesus to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. Why did he do that? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Everybody look at that. Now when you study the word of God, break the words down, see it in there. For he has made him. For God has made Jesus to be sin for us. Isn't that something? And he made us righteous. So are you going to go around all day long and call yourself a sinner? No. What are you going to say? He made you righteous. Who made Jesus sin with our sin? God. Who made us righteous with his righteousness? God. See, we have to totally begin to think according to the word of God. So, what do you, what do you want us to do? By, I want you to go, take this every day, and if you want to build your faith, say it out loud. I am, everybody say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Are we ready? I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Christ. 
I have no sense of inferiority before God. All right. And the Bible says we can come right into the very presence of God by what Christ did for us. It says uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, that we can come boldly without fear right into the presence of God because God sees us holy with his holiness that he made us holy. Now, who made us a sinner? Adam. Everybody say, Adam. Adam. The first Adam made me a sinner. The, the, the last Adam from heaven made me righteous. So now you've got to begin to see yourself totally different if you're going to grow and mature and become strong in the Lord and get rid of the old. Now, th this woman uh, uh, that I was talking to, I said, isn't it wonderful that, that, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ? She said, I'm not righteous. I'm a I'm sinner. Oh, my goodness. Don't you know what God did for you? He made you holy when you put your faith and trust in him. He made you righteous. And when you go through the scriptures, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God. And we accept what God does. Now, <clears throat> let's read that. Let them, let, let them, now this is in, in Hebrews 4, 16. Let us, who's us? See, when you read the Bible, you've got to find out who us is and who they is and who he is and who they are. And that's us. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly, not arrogance, but draw near to the throne of grace. Amen. Woo! The throne of God's unmerited favor to, to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Now, the Hebrew writer there put unmerited favor to us sinners, past tense, but present tense, now that we've been made holy, we can go right into the very presence of God. I'm gonna put the cross up here, and I like to do this because you can get a better picture of, of uh, when you read the Bible, you, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. So when you read the Bible, you will find that God, through the, the uh, apostles and all, are speaking to sinners over here on this side of the cross. They have not died. They have not believed in Christ's death. So they're sinners. So the Bible talks about when we were sinners. You'll find that in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse uh, one, uh, verse two, three, and yeah, verse two and three about us sinners and all one thing and another. But when we, when the Holy Spirit worked and, and showed us we were sinners, we cried out for God. And so then we read the Bible, we find out that God took us, the old Adam, and when Christ died on the cross, everybody say, I died, I died. with Christ. It's a finished work. Jesus said, it's finished. You did. <laughs> but the good news is but God raised Christ from the dead when Christ was buried we were buried with him my old Adam was buried with him and when Christ was raised from the dead who was raised with him raise your hand we were now we have been risen with Christ to walk in the spirit, and we have been raised to set with him in heavenly places. Christ is up there right now. A man is up there. Christ Jesus, the man, is up there in a resurrected body, seated at the right hand side of the Father. And we are seated with him up there, and that's where we get our authority. When we pray, we pray from that position of authority, raised with Christ to walk in the newness of life, and when we speak to the enemy, we don't, will you please take your hands off of me? We don't say it like that. We say it like this. I bind you, you foul spirit of hell. Loosen my mind right now. Put that spirit into it and walk as I... Some of you, I just love to 
see y'all. I wish I could take a picture of you guys. I love it. Yeah, we are more than conquerors. Stand up and say, I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. Not a worm in the cabbage patch, but you're a child of God. Risen to walk in the newness of life. Brand new creation. Oh, you still have the same body, but you're not going to have this body. I mean, it's going to die. Thank God it's going to disappear one day. Give it to the maggots. Now I got some of you laughing, that's for sure. Say so you get excited about this thing because we're going to have a glorified body. You think I look good now, you wait till I get in my glorified body. <laughs> That's how I thought the pastor was handsome when he was in his old body. But man, he, whoo, he looks like Jesus. Yes. Now, our part is to stand fast in that liberty. Notice where Christ has made us free. That's where the enemy comes in. He puts all that stuff in your mind and you're walking around like this. I'm just an old sinner. I've never amounted to nothing. Huh? Other people seem to be happy, but not me. Well, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As long as you think the trash, you act the trash. When you start thinking the victory, you'll walk to victory. You'll act to victory. You'll speak to victory. All right, so let's, let's look at this now. Mm, this is good. Wow. All right, look at the next one. I am a new creature in Christ. I am a new creation being. All right? Right now, you are. Christ Jesus, my Lord, is my wisdom. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my redemption. He is my life. He's my everything. You got to believe that and speak what, what? Speak what you, what you believe. Speak. Everybody says speak. We have the same faith as he did, David. We speak what we believe, okay? We believe we're children of God. We believe we are redeemed. We believe what God says in his word. Now, there's a scripture, I won't turn there, but there's a scripture in uh, Acts 10. How many remember in Acts 10, and Peter was up on the house. Remember Cornelius in the Bible? And the angel appeared to, to Cornelius and and uh, go get this man named Peter, and he'll come, and he'll preach the gospel to you. And so Cornelius obeyed, and he sent his servants to look for Peter, and Peter's up on the housetop taking a nappy. They're fixing dinner downstairs. And the Lord appears, and uh, this sheet comes down. All those unclean animals. I remember that. All clean. And the Lord says, Peter, kill and eat. No, I, 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 don't, I don't eat any unclean thing. And God rebuked him and said, don't you call what I have cleansed unholy or unrighteous anymore. Now, when that revelation came into me, you know what I had to do? Tell me. Repent. You might as well repent now because how many of you just think you're just a worm in the cabbage patch? Most people do, you know, there's still no sinner. No, don't you realize what God has done through Christ our Lord? He's made us sons of God, heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We shall reign and rule with him throughout eternity. Don't you call what I've cleansed and made holy, unholy anymore. Slap, right, just slap Peter real good like. And when that, because I realized in my lifetime, I would see myself that way. How many of you, be honest, raise your hand. Come on, all of you, 100%. Don't you call yourself unholy anymore, for God has cleansed you with his precious blood. Can't get no cleaner, can't get no more saved. You're not trying to get saved, you are saved. If you put your faith in Christ, you can't get no more saved. 
Well, when I was in the Baptist church, at least twice a week, I'd go to the altar just in case it, it did, just in case it didn't take last week. <laughs> come on, come on, wave at me, somebody. I know you're alive out there. You hear what I'm saying? Oh my goodness! Oh, what the Lord has done! It's awesome what the Lord has done. My goodness! Woo! All right, get into the scripture sheets again. Real life, time moving by fast. Here we go. All right, look at number six. Notice this, number six, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now you read that and you confess that until it becomes alive. Now let's make sure what we understand. For the law of the spirit of life, say life, life, life. God is life. The spirit of God is life. That life, the resurrected life of Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. So you're free from sin and you're free from death. And who sets you free? The law of the spirit of life. And we give him praise for it. And you accept it by faith. You believe it. Now, the object is... Go over this. I have a read aloud twice daily to strengthen the inner man. All right. So as you read this and you keep reading this, you'll find yourself getting much stronger. Now, let me share an example. When we came into the realization how powerful the word of God is. My uh, two teenage daughters, Tammy and Sandra, they're in their 50s now. They had warts. One had 16 warts on their hands. The other had 14 warts. <laughs> and Susan would have let them do dishes. And they liked that part. <laughs> I mean, they were warrants, you know. I mean, biggies on their hands. Well, we were coming into this knowledge by confession, not just confessing the negative. If, if you do sin, then if you confess, that's confessing the negative. And God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'm cleansed from all unrighteousness, so I must be righteousness. Well, who cleanses you from all unrighteousness? God, Jesus, God. <laughs> See, take him as his word. Now, uh, so we came into the realization, the power of, of, of the tongue and confessing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. So every day we had them to confess that the word of God can heal. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's in uh, uh, Proverbs 20. Put Proverbs 20. Thank you for putting that up on the board. Look, let's read that. Stop. And the voice came to him, that is to Peter, again a second time. What God has cleansed and pronounced clean. I want you to listen to me now. God has pronounced you clean. Amen. Do not you defile and profane by regarding and calling common and unholy or unclean. Say, ouch. ouch. How many times we've done it? Yeah. So your mind's got to get renewed. God rebuked Peter, don't you call what I have cleansed and, and, and pro pronounced clean. Say, I'm clean. clean. How did you get clean? The Lord did it. When you were saved. Say, I'm clean. I'm, clean. I'm, holy. I'm holy. I'm a saint. I'm and I'm not an ain't, but I'm a saint. All right. You read that when you get home. Now, put Proverbs uh, 4.20 up there. 4.20. King James be fine. Or the, the, the Amplified be fine because it, it brings it out clear. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Next verse. 21. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Next verse, for they are, what? Life. life to those who find them. Notice this, healing and health to all their flesh. Just look at that word, 
The word of God is healing and health to our flesh. Now getting back to the warts on the hands. We, uh, we have healing scriptures, all types of, 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 of scriptures. So we got our girls on the scriptures. Twice a day we got them to say, go through this thing. It took, it took them about 20 minutes and they went through all these healing scriptures. And for one month they did it. And they said, Daddy, it ain't working. I still got these warts, honey. The Word of God is alive. Healing is in the Word of God. Now notice. See, once a wounded spirit who can bear. We try to strengthen our intellect. We try to strengthen our out, outer man. Well, there, 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 there's a point that that's good. But we really need to get the inner man strength, strengthened. Because when your inner man is strong, you can bear up under anything. You can bear up under anything if your spirit man is strong. So here we concentrate on trying to get people's spirit build up in the faith and become strong and robust. <laughs> That's why when you pray, you, you know, you pray in such a way, if anybody's got a wig on, Blow it off. <laughs> you just like a lion. Yeah. Don't squeak like a mouse. Say it with unction. But once you're in a man, it just that inner man. So your inner man gets involved in that prayer. Goes out in the atmosphere and looking for the enemy. There he is. Bip. Take that in Jesus' name. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking spiritual stuff now. All right. For they are life. For they are, what is they? The word. Huh? The word. the word of God is life to those that find them. You've got to find them. You find them in the scriptures, by the way. And they're healing. Notice healing and health. You know, I want to be healed, but I want health. I want health. I want health. See, I want health. We reach for healing. That's good. You need to get your healing. Now you need from that to get into health. And you're going to get in health as you get that inner man built up into faith. The Russians are coming. No problem. Let them come. I've been fighting the devil for 40 years. I can, took care of him. I can take care of them. So your, your mind's getting tough. You, you, you understand what I'm talking about? All right, look. They are, the word of God is healing and health to all their flesh. So as your spirit man gets built up, it rolls over into your physical part. Okay? <clears throat> so anyway, two months went by, and every day they were faithful. They went through the scripture. They said it out loud. Two months, and they got, still got warts on their hands. Daddy, it ain't working. You just keep on confessing that scriptures. But in the process, I noticed their spirit man was getting stronger. Yeah. You see, your spirit man feeds on the word of God. You see, there's life in the word, and the, and, and, and the life in that word gets in, into the spirit man. And the spirit man gets strong. Yeah, you used to get up in the morning, oh, I'm hiding from the devil. Now you get up looking for the devil. Where is he at? I'm telling you. I'm 83 years old. I'm strong in the spirit of God. My life shows it too. Do you have to yell? No. Tell my inner man, you don't have to yell. <laughs> Woke you up, didn't I? But you, you feel it. You sense it. You're strong in the spirit. Yes, sir. The Bible says the outer man is, well, we don't want to read that. It's flaking away. But the inner man is getting stronger day by day, day by day. As you feed it, anything you feed gets stronger. That's good, Pastor. Yeah. Now, get back to my two daughters. All those wars. Not too bad, don't have to do no dishes. Another two weeks went by, and uh, in the third week, <laughs> gone. Not a wart on their hand. And the congregation saw this. 
Frank, you remember that? Frank remembers that. Totally gone. It never come back. Wow. Never come back. Amen. You get what you say. Yes, what do you believe? I say what I believe. God loves me. Yes, God's for me. Yes, I've read the Bible. I've read the Bible. God's for me. And God is for you. <laughs> Your faith grows and matures when you see how God uses his word. He sent his word and what? And healed them by his word. The Santorin, just say the word. My servant will be healed. Like that. I had a telephone call. My nephew just had an accident on a motorcycle and he rolled down Highway 52 and he's a mess. Pastor Bob, would you go up to the hospital and pray for him? Sure. So I'm driving up there, I'm by myself. I go up there and I start quoting scriptures and everything and say, Lord, you know, you're my strength. I thank you for that anointing. When I got up there, see, faith comes by hearing. So I was hearing myself say the word of God as I drove to the hospital. Time I got up there, my faith was high. My faith, my inner man was like that. And the father come to me and said, they're bringing him in. And, and, and I looked at him, fear was all over him. I said, he won't die, he'll live. Now, wait a minute. I know the scriptures. If I say something as a man of God and it doesn't come true, that makes me a false prophet. I understand those principles as a man of God. When I speak, I speak truth. And if I don't speak truth, then I'm a false prophet. And I said, he won't die, he'll live. And I hadn't even seen him yet. And he said, well, it's just bringing him in up there. So I went on over there and all the nurses, everything was bringing him, put him on the table and they was cutting his clothes off of him. Somebody says, the preacher's here. They all backed up. I walked in there and I looked at him. Boy, what a mess he was. But I tell you what, the spirit of faith was on me. The gift of faith was operating. And I looked, I said, you ain't gonna die. You're gonna live. And I take authority over death in the name of Jesus. I backed up and they went in there and they started cutting. I went outside, talked to his father and mother, I forget which one I talked to first. I said, he ain't gonna die, he's gonna live. Yeah, that's right, Carol. <laughs> Carol's like, <"Huh." laughs> And he lived and he came to the fellowship and testified. But we've seen over the years many different things in, in our mis ministry like that. I, uh, I had hurt my back and uh, I got the elders to pray. And I mean, it, but, you know, when your back hurts, it hurts. <laughs> and it, for about three months, I walked around with a bad back. Now, here's how the word of the Lord works. Susan B usually get down on the bed. She's on one side of the bed and I'm on the other side, but this time we were both on the same side of the bed and she was praying. And she said, Lord, by the stripes of Jesus, Bob's back is healed. <laughs> Pooh. Yeah. Oh God, thank you. How many of you know if you got a bad back and, and it's healed, you know it's healed? <laughs> I said, oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just like that. Spoke that word. Bob's back is healed. And just like that. Well, two weeks went by and I was in my shower and that thing hit me again. Boom, my back. I said, no devil, my back is healed. I rebuke you in Jesus name. And the devil went and my back still healed. Sometimes people get healed, but they don't know how to keep their healing. And you got to speak the word of the Lord on this situation. And the devil's going to come and make you think you weren't healed or you ain't saved. Are you going down the drain? No, I ain't going. I'm not going up the drain. I'm not going down the drain. I'm in Jesus. Amen. So you got grounded and rooted in the word of God and you don't move. 
Well, suppose you die. No, I ain't going to die. He that believeth me shall never die. But see, we let fear in. And the devil takes that fear and paralyzes us. We're not going to make it. Yes, you are. You're going to make it. If God be for you, who can be against you? My wife and me have, have gone through unbelievable situations. It took three years to procure this land. Three years. There's three years that, that I was available for the devil to work on me that you're not going to get this land. God spoke to me. This was years ago. And said, find some land and build a church building on it. Those uh, first seven years, uh, first years we met at, we opened our home up and the church met in our home on Meadowcliff Avenue. We had a big living room. We could put 70 people in there. And God filled it up to 70 people. We never invited one person. God just drew people and filled it up. And I said, God, what am I going to do with all these people? So I went out. Start with, I went out on the Highway 52, seeking the Lord and everything, and God brought me all the way around to Yaman Hall Road, and there was a building there. And I pulled up, and he spoke. He said, now this is where you're going to meet. I said, okay. So I went back home. John Baker was uh, alive then, and he was, he'd come to the shield, and, and I told John, I said, John, you know, the Lord told me to pull up to that storefront there and said that the Shield of Faith, uh, that was going to be where the Shield of Faith was going to meet. He said, well, I worked there. And he spoke to me and he said, the next time you mop, um, you mop this floor, you're going to mop it for the Shield of Faith. Well, it came to pass. We got the building, we moved in, and we, we, were, we ministered there for seven and a half years. Frank was with us then. But we've seen God move and honor his word over the years. My, my mother had a tremendous high fever. Dad called me. I'm coming over now. So Susan and me gets, gets in the car. They lived at Pierpont. This was years ago. We went over there. Mom's in the room, high fever. You couldn't get to a doctor. All the, something was going around. I mean, the doctors were full. You could not get an appointment. And I went in there, Susan me went in there, and we took a thought over that uh, fear, that spirit of fear. He said, loosen my mother in the name of Jesus, now. And we went in the other room. Five minutes, my mother comes in. Fever gone. She says, y'all hungry? Well, you know, she knew her son, <laughs> always hungry. <laughs> well, you know, I really, I will eat a few, uh, you know. <laughs> I will have a couple dozen donuts. But anyway, <clears throat> <laughs> but, but see, that's God. That's God. But see, God conditions us. We, we, he prepares us, fills us up with his word of God. We know the principle to keep ourselves up all the time. That way, when God calls, you're available. The anointing is there and things happen. Things happen. Frank's mother was in the hospital three or four years ago. I forgot how many years ago it was. So Susan B. went down there and we visited her in the hospital and had prayer with her and everything. And so Susan B. comes outside, Frank comes out. We talk a little bit outside here. Now I want to show you the timing of God. God works at both ends at the same time. Okay? So we, we spend maybe five minutes out there in the hallway talking. And so I said, well, we got to go. So Frank said, well, goodbye. And I said, goodbye. So Susan me walks down the hallway. We come to the elevator and I push the elevator and the door opens up. Well, that's natural. <laughs> it, shows the, it shows that the elevator's working. So we step in, we push the button, the door shuts. And we're on the second floor. So I push number one, nothing happens. Push it again, nothing happens. Hmm. So I pushed number two, that was the floor we uh, got on the elevator on. 
the door opens, and this woman is standing there. She says, you know where I can find a pastor? I have a woman down here that wants to accept Jesus. I said, right here. I had my little thing here. So we went down there, and we shared the gospel with her, and she gave her life to Christ. Now, you, you, you can't make that happen. See, that's God. You see, God, when you're walking in the Spirit and, 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 you, and you keep yourself up to date, God can use you. And you're ready to go 20, uh, uh, what is it now? 24-7. 24-7. That's it. Thank you. 24-7. You're ready to go. We are ready 24-7. Yes, sir. Well, you never know when somebody might, in the middle of the night, knock on your door. Right, Linda? You and Frank experienced that last week. And they gave me a break. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> and they got up and they had to go find a motel for this person that needed help. And, you know, anyway. <laughs> they understand what Susan Mee is going through now. You never know. See? So you're ready 24-7. But keeping yourself built up in the faith, and this is what this is all about, keeping yourself edified in the spirit. Amen. Now, I want you to turn to uh, number, uh, number 10. When you, in, when you go through all of that, turn to page 10. And this is your positive confession. Everybody there. Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. All my sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses me continuously from all sin. I am justified, made holy, set apart to God. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no place in me and no power over me. Through the blood of Jesus, I renounce him, loose myself from him, and command him to leave me in the name of Jesus. And you say that with authority. You say that every day. Now, as you go through all of this and you come to the climax of that, that's your positive confession. Now, in my life, I had two years. I, I ministered, I must have ministered 10 years Seven days a week, I had a, a job. I worked all day at the air base. I came home. We had people that we counseled. Seven days a week, Susan and me ministered, worked a, a public job. For 20 years, I never received a salary from the Shield of Faith Church. For 20 years. Because I had a job, and that took care of our needs. Can't imagine how much money that is. Wow. But it ain't about money. It's about doing the will of God. But Frank realized at a certain time that I ought to be put on a salary, so they put me on a salary, which I graciously give it and minister it out. <laughs> Plenty of opportunities. But the enemy came against me like I've never known. And this is why I can do spiritual warfare. God allowed the enemy, and my head, all of a sudden my head felt like it was being crushed. Pressure like I've never experienced before on my head. I cried out to God, what in the world is going on? For two years, I carried on my duties as a minister, worked out at the Arab base, ministered, ministered seven days a week. I had to fight for two years. That's how I learned to do spiritual warfare. I learned this word. When I was a kid, I had, I had passivity. How many knows what passivity is? Some of you are about to fall asleep on me here now. You need this. Teacher be talking and I fall asleep. And the enemy took advantage of that. That's why I do not allow my brain or my mind to, 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 focus, to flake out. That's important. The enemy will take, take advantage of that. You have to, 
You have to keep your mind under your control. Okay, hear what I'm saying. Well, I was passive as a young boy. And God began to teach me and show me that you keep your mind. You got to get your mind disciplined. So for two years, I've had to fight demonic powers. I fought demonic powers. I got other people delivered. I used to come home from work. I said, sit down in the chair. That's where we got the chair. And I sit in the chair and Susan lay her hands on me and she could break that demonic hold on my head. And I'd get up and I'd be good for two or three days. Next thing that thing come back on me again. So God begins to say, son, you got to get your spirit man built up in, in the faith. You got to get some unction in your unction. You can't go around here anymore just daydreaming and letting your mind wander around because the enemy takes advantage of that. Now, listen to me now. I learned the hard way. That's why I can be tough in that. You keep your mind under your control. You don't let it wander yonder and wander out there in the desert and come back next week. Keep your mind under your control because that's where the enemy will work. I never had so much pressure. I thought, I, I said, Lord, just kill me. Take me home. I wanted to commit suicide. It was that bad. But I stayed in the word of God. I, I, I seek the Lord with all my heart. And I went through these scripture sheets every day. And little by little, I got freer and freer. And God begins, now you stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Don't you be entangled again. Let your mind wander out there and let the devil take a hold of it and, and just control your life. So I learned to fight the good fight of faith. Frank put this warrior, the warrior's heart. We'll get into that next week a little bit. But there's a lot in it. You take it home. Let's just look at this right here. And th this really, really helped me out tremendous. You have all these different prayers. Uh, is your yoke broken? Lord Jesus Christ, that's page three. I believe you are the son of God. You are the Messiah coming to the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. You died on the cross for my sins and rose again the third day from, from the dead. I confess all my sins and repent. I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me now from all sin. Thank you for redeeming me, cleansing me, justifying me and sanctifying me in your blood. Now remember, the Word of God is life. So as that Word gets into you, it begins to bring life. It's anointed. Is your yoke broken? Read that for us. You, you got it? You got one? You don't have one of these? Okay, I'll get you one. Heavenly Father, I bow and worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you learn to cover yourself with the blood. The enemies out there, the atmosphere. Paul said we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. There you go. Thank you. So you learn to cover yourself. How many learned to take a bath? How many uh, brush their teeth? How many drink water when you're thirsty? How many goes to the bathroom when you had to go to the bathroom? How many goes to sleep? I mean, in the natural, you, all these things you learn, you have to learn these principles in the spiritual arena too, and you cannot be lazy and just have some type of religious uh, whatever. You've got to be diligent in the Word of God and walk with God in such a way. Because I'm like David. <laughs> I went astray before I was afflicted. <laughs> Everybody look at me. I, I don't go straight no more. Because as I go back and I ask God, and God says, because all those years before you had this knowledge, you let the enemy run shotgun over you. And I didn't even know there was an enemy. But see, I met the condition of the enemy by having a passive mind. When the teacher was talking, I was looking out the window. Watching the bug on the ceiling. <laughs> I had to grab myself by the collar and discipline myself to come out of that bondage that I was in. 
And yet the anointing of God was on me. God used me to minister to people during that period of time. But I was suffering and they didn't know it. So, these prayers, as you say them, you will find strength and you will push the enemy back. Remember, we fight against not flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers. Believe me, God allowed me to experience that. Now I know, because I know there's an enemy out there, and he's working on the saints of God double time today. Destroying our families, destroying our kids. How many people I ministered to, and their, and, and, and their life is not in divine order. You've got to get your life in divine order. That's the safety area. But it's re so rewarding to be in charge of your life in Christ. Look what it says. I surrender myself completely. See, the enemy knows if you're really committed. Because if you're not really committed, like you should be, he knows you're lying and you're making people think you are committed. And that's deception and deceitfulness. But he knows and he can afflict. So we go make sure we're under the complete covering of the blood of Christ. We totally sold out to Jesus Christ. He's everything to us. If, our, if we go after anything else, that's idolatry. Are you hearing me? The Bible warns us about that. He's first. He's first. Number one in our lives. And, and as we progress along, he, he pours in his strength and his power. Okay, listen to this now. I surrender myself completely and unreservedly in every area of my life to you. Except that one area, watching TV at 12 o'clock at night when everybody's asleep and I'm in there. See, they won't work. I take a stand against all the workers of Satan that would hinder me in my prayer life. I address myself only to the true and living God to refuse uh, any involvement in Satan in my prayers. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to leave my presence with all your demons. I bring the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ between us. I resist all the endeavors of Satan and his wicked spirits to rob me of the will of God. I choose to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I pull down the strongholds of Satan. I cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I set my mind on things above and not things on the earth. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I wasn't too rough, was it? <laughs> Oh, well, speaking truth. All right, now, take these homes, bring them back, and we'll go over them next week again.